Hello, everyone. Got a little bit of an update here. Something I think kind of a milestone in terms of the next game that I'm working on. So if you've not been paying attention or listening to the things that I, I've been doing, um, we just finished a previous game called Slime Experiments, which you can get on Steam now. It's a little puzzle game kind of thing. I wanted to go a bit bigger, go, you know, do something that I would really enjoy playing myself if it was presented to me. And I decided to make a, a Doom-like first-person shooter type game. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek into how it's been going. So it's still very, very early access alpha stuff, but I managed to do something finished today, I think, that is a huge part of it that took me like a bunch of hours and multiple days of, of working on from scratch to get to work. So I wanna show it to you. So first and foremost, Let's go ahead and switch over to my, my monitor here. Here we are back in Unity. But now it doesn't look like much right now because we're in uh, the editor thing, but I think this is where I want it to be. So anyway, we're gonna hit play. We're gonna be greeted with our lovely little um, screen here. It's gonna show us our title screen, all of our different things. Now I have a game already saved. Um, if I didn't and we hit new game, we would go basically spawn into a tutorial that would take us through all that. So we're just going to hit continue, which is going to show a really quick loading screen as it loads, and then bring us to this lovely 3D prefabbed area with tables and chairs and a receptionist. And as you can tell, not a lot of detail quite yet, uh, because I just don't have graphical assets for it yet, right? I'm still trying to figure that stuff out and, and get that stuff going. But I do have the player able to move, look around, we can interact with the NPC here, who's the receptionist. That's not going to be the actual receptionist, receptionist excuse me. But she's just going to uh, be here to allow us to talk. We can go through dialogue and all that. Also, this is a custom font specifically made for the game. So it's fun. And then so she's going to be giving you or you're going to turn your quests and stuff into her, which is how that's going to go. And then over here, we have two red boards that look like nothing right now. Uh, I do need to get textures for them, like I said, but we have a main quest board and a side quest board. And these are where the majority of the gameplay is going to come from. We have the main quest, which is going to, you know, progress the, the main quest, obviously. And my plan for those is to have pre-built, like handcrafted levels that are just, mwah, just lovely, right? And then the side quest board over here, which is going to be our main focus today, is going to allow you to select a random, well, we can just click here. So as you can see here, we, we're currently rank F. Here we have um, our uh, basically quest poster. We can hit next quest and show different uh, objectives and, and stuff like that, what our enemies are gonna be, the description of what we need to do. Like, please exterminate some slimes in the forest. Please collect some meat from horned rabbits or collect some meat from wild boars or thin out the number of wolves in the forest or a king slime has appeared, go kill it. Um, that kind of stuff. And each one has a different amount of reward that you're going to get, which is gold and that kind of stuff. And as you level up or complete main quests, basically you will unlock different ranked quests, which will take you to different locations, which will give you different enemies and all that good stuff. You can also hit close to close the board here and walk back away. But, um, just found a bug. Apparently if you close out of the quest board, you can't re-enter it. Also, here's the pause menu. Uh, we'll just stop and re-enter. No biggie there. A couple of seconds. Good to note that down. I will make a note of that and fix that later. Like I said, still very early alpha. I've barely done like any bug stuff. So anyway, the main focus is right here, the quests. So this is also, fun fact, this font, also a font made just for this game to look kind of like a handwritten kind of font rather than the, the bold menu fonts that you've seen around here, right? So we're going to accept this quest. It's going to take us a second and load. So as you can see, we can we can punch very poorly. You can see the hand moving there when I punch. We have a health bar on the left in the middle there, and we have a uh, mana bar on the right, which is going to be like our ammunition essentially for guns and stuff like that. We also have a gray bar that's overlapping the red bar, which is our armor, which... Uh, just exists for right now, although it should not be existing right now. So that's something I'm gonna have to look at and figure out why it's going. We also have the ability to dodge. So if I like strafe here, 
then I hit uh, shift, you can see I, I got a little boost of speed to shift out of there. It also gives you temporarily in, temporarily uh, invincibility, like uh, that kind of stuff. And then uh, you can see it has a little cool bar, a cooldown bar down there. Once it's gone, you can go ahead and dodge some more. Perfect. Uh, right now, I don't have any other weapons done. This was just so I could test out attacking and, and animations for the first person view. We also have a crosshair in the middle. Uh, I plan to change that depending upon your weapon and stuff. But the main focus is the level. Look at this. Look at this level. We can go around here. We can go into these different levels that are currently empty. They don't have anything in them. They're just so I could test out the uh, level generation here. And this is the exit because it's a, a red wall. That's the only reason there. But if we go into our, our scene viewer here, you can see the level from the top view. So we started here, walked through here. Has a couple of different rooms. So the way that this works is uh, like a thousand lines of code uh, to randomly generate a level. So if we go back into here, I made a shortcut key, uh, K. So if we hit K, it'll completely create a new level for us. So if we go back into the scene view, you can see the level looks different now. Here's our spawn. And then we have like that. So currently it's only trying to make five uh, um, these things five different jesus christ five different tiles i'm going to call them so one two three four five and after it puts down the main five tiles which have multiple paths it places the exit first then it places these little end caps which are just basically to cap off any rooms that have openings to make sure everything is nice and concise and well the player can't wander out of the map easy peasy right so it also is going to you know, choose and select what monsters are going to be spawned in the rooms and whatnot. But that's for a later time. Right now, the focus was on the generation. So if we hit K again, here, you might see down here where it says, uh, did panic spawn. So in the event of various things going wrong during the generation of level, it will take a pre-built level instead and place it down here this is one of the levels or i guess the only level that i have pre-built that it will do so if we go back into here at k again we can see that oh another panic level and it's the same exact one so the panic level can happen for a few reasons um and i'll get to those in a second but if we back out of here Here's our, our new level, a nice little square one. So one, two, three, four, five, and then the end cap, and then we have the other tiles there to kind of box things in. Nice random generation and stuff. I love it. It took so long to get this working. Um, another panic spawn, as you can see. If we just keep hitting this, we can... I wish I could just look at the scene view and hit K a bunch of times just to see it change from up here. I guess what we could do is uh, throw this over here move this over like that, and then I could just, from here, maybe, there we go. So now you can see the, the level changing as I'm hitting K. It'll, it'll keep generating a new, th I don't know why I didn't think to do this in the first place. It'll keep generating. Sometimes it'll be like, oh, we don't have a uh, thing to spawn, so that's unfortunate. You're going to get those panic spawns coming because you, know, you just kind of have to in order to get certain things as they are. I want to get one specific generation to happen. It's, it's rare because it's a huge room and you'll know it when you see it because it's, it's not a small one like these. Like I said, it's very rare to happen. There we go. There it is. So if we uh, travel down here, you can see my little guy moving on the left there. But if we travel down here, we can see a nice big open room, and this is actually uh, four different tiles placed together to do this. And each one of them can potentially have like a, a door and stuff there to kind of give a bigger area, like a boss arena potentially, stuff like that. Um, and if we actually close out of this, open up this one, and we go over to here, we'll be able to see if we select this. This whole thing is a tile, we can grab it and move it away. Or whatever and as you can see it's it's different uh, little tiles those errors don't don't worry about them they're for something else i was having some issues so anyway like i had said there were a couple of problems when we uh 
came around and were doing things. And I was trying to generate levels randomly. Um, probably the worst thing that was happening was it just not creating a level because it, it just could not, it didn't have enough like space, right? Or something like that. So, so one of the things, if we open up my code, one of the things that I just did here is at the end of this, which is the uh, tile placement thing here. So this one adds another tile. So this is the, the bulk of what this code does. You don't have to worry about what the, what the code is, what it all does, and yada yada. I'm not going to go through all of that. This just spawns a tile, right? This code here, all the way down to here. And the last thing we do, we check if a loop has been made, OK, which is a up, down, left, right, and then up again kind of thing. So we check that. If we have gone in a circle, that means that potentially the level is going to be sealed off and won't have any room for an exit to happen. And if that happens, then we're just going to say, no, we just want to hit the panic level and just generate one of those. So that's just kind of what's going to happen there. Um, because what we do is what we, we take a... First of all, a random piece. So when we go to add another tile, we first want to check if the tile location we can place something in, right? That's the first thing I check. And then if a tile can be placed, we select randomly from our list of available tiles to place it there. And then we make sure that that tile has an opening that is facing the way that we currently came from. So in the for example, for the start, it's always going to be facing up. So we want to make sure that the tile that we're going to place has an opening to the bottom. So that way the player can move through, right? Uh, very simple stuff there. Um, so we check the placement. If the placement does not work, we're going to cancel the placement. But if we come up to the uh, loop here, we have this while loop right here. And it's going to keep adding tiles until we've attempted to add tile or a tile 750 times, or if panic was triggered. So if the panic gets triggered, we're going to go ahead and just exit out right away. And that's going to happen, like I said, if um, a tile cannot be found anywhere to place at all, or if a loop has been made, um, we're going to just quit. But if we haven't triggered the panic yet, and we've attempted to find and place a tile 750 times, we just say screw it and quit. Because if I do not have this attempt to spawn, uh, spawn attempt check here, this, for all intents and purposes, it is an infinite loop. And the thing that took the most time was figuring out that that was a problem. Obviously, if, if you know anything about coding, infinite loops are bad and they're whatever. But I was like, well, it should never just continue to go for like ever, right? It should eventually have all the tiles that it needs and then quit, right? Um, because once it hits a certain tile counter, right? Once we have you know a certain amount of tiles, it's going to go, okay, we're done, and then leave. However, that's apparently not the case. So when I would hit play and then go into it and select accept quest you knew it would just freeze it would just lock up not let me do anything so i had to add this spawn attempt thing and we can change it around as well um so if we if we were to make this let's just add another zero behind it and hit save so it will take significantly longer to actually generate the level now if we try to do it here or it could work right away it, it depends like i said sometimes you can get a few attempts other times a lot so if we hit accept quest we can see a black screen for a little bit and then we're in nice so if we hit k we can void down a little bit get a panic spawn hit k game just locks up like this but then eventually we get divided to find a panic spawn and in order to prevent that locking up i set it to a round uh, 750 rather than over a thousand because when we were getting at a thousand attempts it was uh, hanging for quite a bit and I did not like that so I was like let's let's not do that so we're gonna hit this button and 
I'm going to change it back to 750 and we're going to make a bigger level this time. So the way to make a bigger level is I have these random generators and these are for the different rank of missions. That way I can just choose the different pieces because rank F is a forest, rank C is a cave, for example, um, and one's a labyrinth, one's a volcano, or that's what I have planned anyway. Regardless, these are all the pieces that go into it that I've currently made. If you look down at the paths, you can see uh, all the little prefabs. They're just basically little squares that have some walls, just so I could test out kind of like a maze-like thing um, and all that. But the real thing comes from this boy here. And as you can see, we have minimum number of tiles, and that's the minimum we want before we place an exit down. So if I change this to, say, 15, and then I hit play, we can then go and hit continue. Boop, 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 boop. Hit accept quest. And of course we want to <clears throat> go to our council to make sure that we can see when a normal level is actually created. Although since there's more tile possibilities, it's going to take a little bit longer to actually find one that's not a uh, error here. This one might actually have worked. There we go. So here's our level, as you can see. And we start all the way down here. It goes all the way up there. And as you can see, all the openings appear to be uh, proper, except actually, I think this one shouldn't be here. Right? If I select this and do that, we can see it. Yeah, it should have a door there. But I think for all intents and purposes, I think that'll be fine because all the things are going to be hidden by like if there is a dead end there, that's going to be like a, a bunch of trees or like a woods or something like that. That's going to block it anyway. So even if there could potentially be a path there, it's fine. The main problem comes if we have like an opening that leads outside the map. That is bad. But I think for the most part, if we actually close this one up, we can see the, the order in which they were generated. So we spawned here and we go one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then the end. And then after the end, we placed down all of these various end caps here and all that good jazz. And that is how we finished generation. So yeah, it depends upon how much you want. Like, after some playtesting, I will, of course, be like, okay, what is a number that I want to settle on? Because 5 might not be too many, but 15 might be too much for the levels. Um, perhaps like the later levels will be longer and the shorter or the easier levels will be shorter, you know, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the gist of what I have right now, in addition to the, um, uh, main menu, the canvases, all that good jazz. And if we go into continue here, we can actually open up the settings menu. And as you can see, I have, these are all going to be button keys. I show you like what button does what. We can turn off the head bob. So if we actually turn this off and hit apply and close, unpause it, you can see that we no longer have the like head movement. So if we go left and right like that, and then we go back to settings, turn that back on, apply and close. You now see I kind of like bob up and down a little bit like you do in like the other, like in Doom and stuff like that, right? If we go back to settings, we can turn off the, uh, the crosshair uh, health stuff, which hides that. Um, actually, I think that's hidden by default in the level, or it's supposed to be anyway. Go back out here, toggle that on, and pause. Yeah, so that's fine. Anyway, um, we also have gun management, which here we have various uh, things here. So this these would normally show different pictures, ideally, of what the weapon is. So if we hit this one, for example... It's going to show us we have brass knuckles. Uh, the range is two, damage is two, attack rate is one, and they cost no mana. We could then, if we had a gun point, we could then buy a, a new gun, or we could get a, another tier of melee, for example. Uh, and the way it's going to work is you go, you buy a melee, it unlocks pistols. You buy a pistol, it unlocks a rifle. You unlock a rifle, it unlocks a shotgun, and then snipers and rockets and magic. And each one of those is like the different weapon types, right? So if you start with a pistol, you kind of have a semi-automatic pistol. After you uh, upgrade the pistol to tier 2, it's going to allow you to choose between having the same pistol or you could get a 
faster firing automatic pistol like a Glock, for example. And the final pistol is something like a Desert Eagle. It fires a little bit slower, but it has a lot more damage to it. For the rifles, you're going to start off semi-automatic, then you're going to get an automatic, then you're going to get a minigun, and that's going to be fun. And for shotgun, it's going to go double barrel, uh, I think just like a pump action, and then an automatic shotgun. Snipers, we're going to have a, a bolt action, a semi-automatic, and a 50 cal sniper for like really high damage stuff. For rockets, I plan to have like a single like rocket, and then the second one, I want to have be uh, like multiple rockets can be fired from the same weapon with like a fairly slow cooldown. And the last one is going to be like cluster rockets. So you fire a rocket, then it blows up into smaller things and damages enemies. And the magic, basically it's going to be like a, a staff that shoots a fireball. Uh, then you're going to have a book that shoots a different spell of some sort. And the last one, I'm not going to give that one away. It's going to be a uh, thing like BFG. In Doom, that's what the the final magic one is going to be for me. That's how that's going to go. Um, but yeah, and then also one thing: stats should be showing up here. So if I actually go into here and go here, this uh, where's that at actually? Not attached to the player, no. Am I blind? Where's my pause menu? It was oh, they're here. So if we hit this, not that, um, status button right there. Now we have the status button. We can click that. As you can see, we can see the the different. Um, we can see the level, the experience, uh, just some lore about the character. We can see the different um, stat points we could put it into. If we hit this button, it'll show us um, the various information about what it does. For example, strength. Every four points in strength increases your melee damage by one, and every 25 points lets you carry an extra HP or MP potion and armor. If you reset your stats and do not reallocate to, I should say, strength, uh, you will lose items. For example, if you have like 25 uh, points in strength and you um, reallocate, you would have an extra potion that you lose uh, from that. So, And then also after 100 points put into one thing, these increases drop off. So you aren't able to carry more potions and your melee damage is increased by like barely anything. Um, and for endurance, for example, uh, increases your HP by two every five points, decreases damage taken by one, but you can never take zero damage. So after 100 points, the benefit drops off. And for this one, very simple for the damage dropping off, doesn't say it explicitly, but the endurance for HP will decrease from two every point to one every point, and then your damage taken being reduced, I think goes to like 98. But I think uh, since it's every five, you go to like 20 less damage taken, and then it's like 0 0.5 or something. It's something really small. Then luck increases your magical weapons crit rate. Uh, only magic weapons, because guns, they aren't magical. They don't require luck. They just require aim. Um, up to 100%. Every two points increases the enemy's drop chance by 1% up to 100 points. And then after 100, after 100 points, it drops off, like I said. So crit chance would go up by 1%. And then enemy drop rate goes up by like 0.1% every time until it goes to 100%, right? So, and then over here you have like what the, what is actually happening, right? So that's cool. And then intelligence increases your total mana and mana regeneration per minute. And then agility is your movement speed and your dodge cooldown. So if you want to move around really fast, invest into movement speed. 
because that way it'll increase your movement speed or increase agility because that way it will increase your dodge and your uh, movement speed. So, And then the dodge cooldown caps at uh, 2.5 seconds because the cooldown starts at 5 seconds. Um, and I think 0 0.5 seconds for a cooldown is, is going to be the limit because otherwise you can just dodge forever and never get hit, right? Uh, movement speed also caps at plus 20, which is double the current movement speed. I think anything else might cause some issues. I will test that a little bit later, right? Uh, also, you might notice the, the edges of the text is messed up and the size is a little weird. Like, you can't really tell this is a plus mark um, and whatnot. And that's because I just imported the text after I already had this laid out in the old text uh, font, I should say. And so that's why it looks a little bit weird. I will after I get like the background stuff that I currently have someone working on backgrounds to like make these this you gooey look better. Uh, but once I get those, I'll actually deal with like fine tuning where exactly everything goes and making it look beautiful. Right. So that's the plan for all that. Is there anything else that I have made? I don't think there is. Um, I just have all the different stats for like what uh, the weapons will do for now. They might change later on. I have the, oh, I, I guess I do have all the quests finished uh, for what they're going to be and all that good jazz. I have the quests finished, but not the uh, dialogue and like not, not the actual levels created for it, right? So basically if you look at uh, F rank for the main story, now the forest are getting over almost slimes. Can someone take care of them is the basic thing for that. And then level two, in the eastern part of the forest, I came across uh, a bunch of rabbits. Please take care of them. Uh, level three, the local lord wants a feast tomorrow. Hunt some boars down. Stuff like that, right? And it gets more intense as you go up the levels and you do various things, right? Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have right now for the game. Like I said, once I actually get more assets coming up for them and whatnot... Uh, it'll be, it'll, it'll look prettier. I still have to figure out exactly how I'm going to do the, uh, like tables and chairs because I can't use a flat texture for those necessarily. Um, cause if I try to rotate it, like if we, uh, oh, hold on, let me go back into here. You might not have seen it, but if we take a look at the receptionist, what happens is if we go around, she, she turns to look at you and all that, right? Doing that with like a uh, an actual static like chair or uh, table that you can come up to and actually like see the top and the side of at the same time uh, is going to be a little bit weird. So I might have to actually get someone to make textures for that or figure out how I'm going to do that. For some things, I don't think it would matter too much, but for like things like objects like that, I think it would matter. Um, yeah and all that kind of stuff but that is the plan and how, what i have right now for the game so cool cool um if you are curious i do have some other things planned that i might want to add later uh namely rather than having the receptionist save for you i want to add more to the town so that you can go to an inn and then save at the inn to make it more rpg like um, i also want to potentially create a housing where the player can buy a house and then buy decorations for the house and also, like, display trophies from kills. Uh, they get, like, if they kill, like, 100 slimes, they get a slime trophy they can display. And then every, like, trophy and thing in their room increases the, like, room's level. And then when they sleep in the room, they can get a, like, bonus that lasts for, like, a mission or something like that, right? So, like, uh, if you sleep in your house, you gain 20 extra health for that next mission, right? Uh, something kind of cool like that. But that's... Assuming I get everything else in and everything else works properly and smoothly, then I'm going to add the housing in the inn uh, instead. Because right now, I just want to focus on getting the important stuff in. And if I get all that in, it'll work properly. Yeah. So anyway, that is all I have for everyone right now. I was really impressed with my uh, uh, <clears throat> random level generation. I thought that one pretty cool. I did try to look up and I was just like level generation uh, videos and I was like, OK, these I could follow along with, but they weren't like how I wanted them to be. 
they were take a square room with doors on all sides and just make a very like basic labyrinth kind of thing with those and i was like oh well, what if i want different sized rooms or what if i want rooms that only have one or two entrances um, or what if i you know all this other stuff and so i was like i'll just write it from scratch and so i spent the last like couple days writing from scratch and doing that and that's what i came up with so i wanted to show you all that and, and go from there so anyway that's this update uh, i don't know if i'll do another update maybe when i get more graphics and stuff implemented and a little more stuff to show you guys like combat or something uh, we can go from there but i don't know when that would be so until next time everyone bye for now